Hey everybody, Caleb with Almond Landscape here. Welcome to the Almond Landscape YouTube channel. Um, I'm today gonna be building a pad here for our uh, standalone, well, I don't know what it's really considered, standalone generator, although it really isn't because it still runs off of natural gas. But uh, we are gonna be doing a small little paper pad here to uh, support our generator here, little uh, non-endorsement here, Generac uh, generator for the house. Uh, we have natural gas, thank the Lord, so uh, we've got it just rough plumbed in here. And uh, that's thanks to my father-in-law, who is, uh, uh, that's his uh, previous profession from being retired. This silver tape is covering up holes in the siding from a tree that fell down in, <laughs> from my neighbor's property and just barely hit the house and ripped all my siding. All the siding's getting redone next year. I'm sorry, no, late this year. And uh, whatever. So first things first. Always call utility, uh, locate services, 811. Call before you dig, all that stuff. Make sure you're not gonna hit utilities in this area where you're digging, whatever. I don't care if you're an inch deep or whatever. So always make sure you're doing that. Next thing, um, we're doing a, a, an installation here on what's called Juice Synthetic Base. And it's this foam pad, which is really a great product for, and there's several different manufacturers of this stuff. So, um, that stuff takes the place of a bunch of base. So where it makes the most sense is areas where you don't have to excavate a lot uh, or you don't have to bring in a lot of fill. If you've got a fill with gravel base any more than, uh, oh, you know, any much more than an inch beyond what they say the setting bed should be, uh, it's you should probably just go traditional base on a paver installation. So we've got a video going back. Hopefully maybe we can link it somehow and all that stuff uh, of a, a, a geosynthetic base installation. And it's a 20 minute long video. It's fantastic. Uh, I'm really proud of it actually. Um, but check that out. Uh, cause that'll give you way more in depth here than what we're going to talk about here today. But for the most part, got this excavated to the elevations that we want. Cause I want this thing set up a little higher just in case this area were to flood or anything like that. Want that generator up a little bit. And, uh, we're going to compact this area here with our little, uh, itty bitty compactor. I wish to goodness I'd loaded up my, uh, we've got a Bartel mini reversible. It's about that size, but it's reversible. So that thing's super wonderful, but uh, we're gonna set this and I'm gonna compact this and then we're gonna be ready for our number nine stone, which is around here somewhere. And, uh, and we'll show you all that stuff. So here we go. back to it here welcome we're uh so the, the specs on most of these geosynthetic base products have you putting down a geo separator fabric of some kind this i like to use a woven any chance i get it's got a higher tensile strength it's stronger um and then we've got our bars there getting ready to screed out our one inch setting bed which we use a number nine graded stone astm number nine which is this uh, quarter inch, no dust, angular, but it screeds really nicely, creates a perfect bed there that we can then set the base on, which is this juice synthetic base material. So we'll get this set on here and it'll be awesome. So normally we're gonna have just like a screed, we're gonna have an actual screed tool for this, but this is small enough. And again, check out that YouTube video that we did you know, specifically utilizing this product. But this is how we screed out a bed for standard pavers or, you know, whatever. You you name retaining wall, base course. But we're just going to screed it out. You want your uh, bedding material to be pretty clean. This has got obviously a lot of that 57 in it, which makes it kind of crummy to work with. So that's pretty good. Now, if I had the right tools, I mean, it's a home project, so my guys have all the good stuff. <laughs> um, I would have a screed, or a screed board just wide, just as exactly wide as I want for this. So that's what that would be like. So this is all laid out. I'll pull these poles up, fill those indentations there. You want to make sure those don't get bent. Toss them like that's okay. It's stepping on them is what really is hard on them. So I'll just go through with my finish trowel. I'll fill those grooves up, and we're ready to lay our geo base down on there. Okay. Perfect, Levi. Go ahead. 
some people don't worry about filling these up. Depends on the size of your pavers and all that. You really ought to fill them, I believe. No more, no more. No, Dad. No, no more. We don't need it. All right, so that's that one. Now we'll do this one. There we are, there's a pad for our base mats, which is super cool because all we do is lay them down like this, interlock them across here for the right length and we're done. So we just take our panels and whatever system you're using, literally just going to lay these down here and these, these are the exact dimensions I need, which is three by four. So these literally just lay on there like that. You gotta you gotta strategize or to quote W, use some strategery on how these link out because you wanna lay them so that you just lay them on top of each other because it's a tongue and groove. I don't know if that's exactly tongue and groove, but an overlap link system like that. So you wanna make sure it makes sense just to stack them onward. But that's that. Now we're ready to set pavers on there and that's awesome. Got my pavers down. It doesn't need to be a fancy pattern or anything. It's just uh, some Beacon Hill we had left over from the shop. I don't want to do any cutting and I don't want to mess with this anymore than I already have to. It's a total overkill project, but it's gonna be a super sturdy base for my generator and it's elevated past any flooding issues or anything of the sort ever. I'm gonna take a razor knife and cut that off. And then I'll probably, again, just run a little bead of concrete around this, but I'm actually gonna take some glue, uh, masonry adhesive, concrete adhesive and glue down. I'm gonna lift up the corners and just lift and just glue that outer edge down and that'll adhere to the mat or that uh, juice synthetic base. And uh, we'll set our generator on here. I'm gonna get some joint uh, polymeric joining sand and put it in there. I'm gonna take a piece of tape and cover off the edges there so that it stays uh, stays in and we'll have a nice little finished project, be awesome. We'll just go all the way on it here. What the heck, you know? Because generally there's gonna be a plastic edging you're gonna put in with this stuff with a special screw that binds into this stuff, but that's not really an option right now. I'm gonna put down a little more than that. Since I kind of drug my feet getting that on there, that's probably way too much, but oh well. But the great thing about that stuff is, as opposed to your standard glues, it doesn't, uh, you know, you put a bead of it in there like, like uh, you know the construction liquid nails and stuff like that you put that in there and it's gonna it's gonna artificially raise it you know an eighth of an inch or whatever so this goes like that and that is pretty cool so structure bond is a our one of our first sponsors of the kid contractor podcast so thank you uh techno seal appreciate that good morning everybody we're going to so we got rained out yesterday now we're gonna pop so he's glued the edge down it worked great that stuff's on there super solid i love it um for this application, I think it'd be okay. For anything where a mower might run over the edge of it or whatever, I would still use a physical edge restraint. So now, I wanna say I saw a cup in there. But we're gonna just put a little bit of poly sand in here. All right, Levi, sweep it into the joint. Okay. But I taped the edges, as you might be able to see. I put some tape on the edges there to restrain that. There you go, Levi, yep, tape it right in there, buddy. And uh, what we're just gonna go through, put that poly sand in there. Generally, we run a compactor over it and all this stuff. We're not going to do that on this thing. Another note is, too, um, one of my gas buddies, again, my father-in-law did, uh, didn't do generators for a living. He did heating, ventilation, air conditioning. And somebody mentioned to me that code is going to be, can't put a generator within five feet of a window or something like that. So keep that in mind. This is not a video on how to install generators or how to do anything like that. So caveat emptor uh, there. So anyways, we're going to get this sand in here. I am going to take a dead blow hammer and just kind of use that to consolidate the material in a little bit better but uh generally we would just run it over like this kind of get some poly sand in like this it 
and where Levi's at, there's a section of four corners. I could have redone that, um, but again, time-wise, we're just pressed for time, but with uh, all my help here and everything. So, okay, so we're just gonna sweep all this material into the joints, and we're gonna get that all in there. Then we'll take a leaf blower, and blow off the dust, and then we'll water it in per the manufacturer's recommendations. Right, so we get this all in here. Doing a good job, Levi. Perfect, buddy. Did you get it up to the edge here? Excuse me. Oh, you did perfect, okay. Awesome, so I'm gonna take a dead blow hammer and then we're just gonna take this, I'm just gonna use this to consolidate these joints, make sure, and this is what the, vib the, you know, the vibratory compaction process does, but this will have to work. You can just see how it just works that sand in like that. So just a light dead blow hammer, nothing crazy. And when you compact, actually you don't want to do that over top of your sand. But again, this is <laughs> this is what it is, folks. So we'll clean this off and then we'll wet it down and we're good to go. And then we'll get that sand within about uh, within about an eighth inch of the top of the paver or right to the bottom of that chamfer, which is that angle that those pavers are at top, get to the bottom of that chamfer. Now we're getting our, we've got our grade in there. Everything's sloping or wrapped around the side to drain, you know, water, like an excess amount of water would get back there for a reason. Positive drain away from the house, positive drain, positive drain. Everything slopes away from the house, uh, down and around, whatever the case is. Well, careful not to go in our little ventilator there. And, uh, which I may have to seal it off just because of a carbon monoxide concern I have with that going into the crawl space. So may seal that off. Here's our generator tentatively set for the moment. It'll be, you know, centered better and all that once we got to hook up the gas and all that, but looks nice on simple paper pads. Super overkill on this project when you could just do concrete pad like that, but you know, that's how we do around here. Make mountains out of molehills. Uh, we'll see that at some point. Obviously it sits a little higher. I wanted, I wanted this thing up out of any potential moisture at all, so it's definitely up to that standard, so that's pretty cool. And then the exhaust, you know, one thing too with your plant material, there's a certain minimum clearing, clearing they want around this thing. 18 inches is what they ask for, just so you know. The exhaust of this thing blown against this boxwood could be really hard on it, uh, or, you know, whatever, so. So that's the conclusion of that. If uh, you like that kind of stuff, paver talk and whatever, we got more coming out here at Almond Landscape YouTube channel. Check us out on Instagram, uh, The Hardscape Academy, www.thehardscapeacademy.com. We talk about traditional paver installations, how to do it properly, how to do it to win, and uh, I don't know, create proper installations. Uh, also check out Kid Contractor Podcast. Uh, that's a podcast I host with Brit sometimes and we talk about all business things and philosophy and who knows what else redneck philosophy and all that so thanks folks appreciate it have a good one say bye Levi my big bye. good job buddy we analyzed uh snow plowing what we were making and then I we were into uh renting a road grinder to do ro road resurfacing and so we knew what the cost was to rent it.